schlug mein Herz, das fing zu fällen. Es war getan, was ich gedacht. This is John Pony for London Green News outside of the British Museum. We speak to Chris Quince, the President of the Restitution of the Parthenon Marbles in the United Kingdom. Schlug mein Herz, das fing zu fällen. Es war getan, fast ich. I'm Declan Wilkes and today we're joined by Chris Price, who's head of the committee for the restoration of the Parthenon Marbles. So a bit of your background in relation to this issue and where the campaign currently is. Yes, uh, can I get it straight that the, the, the name of the committee is the Committee for the Restitution of the Parthenon Marbles, but we've changed it now to the Committee for the Reunification of the Parthenon Marbles, because half of them are in Athens and the other half are in London, and that's why it's a particular special case. The, the Parthenon Freeze, which went round the uh, outside of the uh, uh, temple, uh, because if half of Nelson's column was in Greece and the other half was in England, we'd probably want it back. So that's one of the arguments for it. How I got involved, well, um, I mean, when I was at university in Oxford, we, I did classics because I've been taught classics at school. And I was very impressed the first time I went to Athens. You, the, in those days, in the 1950s, you could wander all over the Acropolis. No, no one was going to stop you doing anything. And I had a particular um, uh, experience. We were students and all looked terribly scruffy. And the, uh, the, uh, the only student hostel in, in Athens in those days, they said, how do I know you're students? You don't look like students. I mean, he said this in Greek, and one of us could understand Greek. And um, he said, uh, recite the first 10 lines of the Iliad of Homer. Uh, and we all could. Um, <laughs> every single one of them. So I got interested from that point onwards, not only in ancient Greece and the Parthenon and all that sort of thing, but in the, uh, how much the, mo the mo current generation of Greeks uh, are really proud of their uh, pedigree and how much they're not and why they sometimes almost uh, kowtow to Britain and say, oh, they some uh, um, senior Greeks would say to me, oh, they're best in the British Museum, you, you look after these things better than we can. And so that's, that was my first experience. Then in, I was a member of Parliament for much of the 60s and 70s and early 80s. And in the 80s, uh, I'd gone to Greece and I was the only journalist to predict that uh, Andreas Pap Papandreou was going to get an absolute majority in 82. Um, and I then met Melina, and then Melina came to London, Melina McCoury, uh, and uh, when she was Minister of Culture, and uh, to say we want our marbles back. And it was a really, I found a very exciting occasion. And I got very fond of Melina, and I suspect that she got a bit fond of me, I don't know, but we, we, I was chairman in the House of Commons at the time of the Committee on the Arts and Culture, you see. So, uh, she came, I, I showed her around the House of Commons and things. Um, and then uh, the lady who runs the committee, a woman called Mrs. Elena Cubitt, she is Greek and her husband was a very well-known sculptor and architect uh, and very much admired the marbles. And he, just before he died, said, Elena, you must start a committee to get these marbles back to Athens because that's where they should be. And that was 20 years ago. And I've been involved in the campaign ever since, arguing on the one hand with ministers who are utterly bored, Tory or Labour, they're just bored by it. They don't see why they should, they know little about it and don't want to know anymore. Greek governments, some of whom haven't been a lot better than the uh, British governments. And the British Museum and the whole museum community, which is in my view in a state of really interesting revolutionary change. There's the old museums who have a sort of what we have, we hold uh, attitude and we're not giving anything back, which I think has all sorts of echoes of colonialism. And all sorts of new agreements that are taking back, stuff from the Gettys going back to Italy, that Yale's done a deal with Peru, and uh, all sorts of other smaller deals have been done, especially since 
Tony Blair was persuaded by John Howard in Australia that he needed the Aborigine vote, actually. Mm. And that's why the bones and the, uh, the bones should go back, the human remains yeah. that we had should go back. So we've got the principle that human remains should go back. Bones should go back, but not stones at the moment. On the grounds that human remains mean something terribly near the hearts of the population. But nobody cares about stones. And yeah. So a lot of the things I talk about is that just go to Athens and ask one or two people and they'll tell you they do care about stones. Yeah. And on the issue of caring, um, it's an issue that's been alive for many years, uh, the repatriation. And with each new generation of uh, London Greek people, the issue kind of dies out a bit. Why should young Greeks care about this? Well, I don't uh, know, but I do know an awful lot of young Greeks at our universities today have got uh, some fascinating exhibitions going over the last seven or eight years about this. So there are some young Greeks who do care about it and get young British people really interested. I think um, they should uh, care about it because, um, well, for two reasons. One. I think they should value their heritage in this sort of way. And when uh, the Greek governments have got all this money out of Europe to build that brand new museum next to the Acropolis, uh, they should join in a campaign to make sure that what's in that museum is what ought to be in that museum. The other thing is, it's young, young Greeks ought to tell the story from their point of view of what actually happened between 1802 and 1806 when Lord Elgin was made, or pretty well appointed himself, he went down to Brighton where the King George III was taking the waters and said, I want to be your ambassador to Constantinople. And they said, okay, you know, do it. And he married a very rich girl and because he was pretty impoverished himself. And he was... He got a piece of paper from the Ottoman Empire saying he could pick up loose stones with inscriptions on them. What he did was immediately sent off to Italy where they'd invented a, a saw which would actually saw marble uh, in a way that it was a technological breakthrough in Italy and got the craftsmen and, and these saws from Italy and cut off half the... Uh, Arthur and Freeze, which was uh, part of the same block uh, of, of stone in a such a way they can never be put back again. I mean, in the sense of he'd taken the whole thing, it's too heavy even for his ships to carry. So he was just a complete uh, vandal. And in his diaries, you can say that he, you can see he really wanted to. Um, uh, um, decorate his own house in Scotland, in Gordon Brown's constituency, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and um, Broom Hall, it was called, this house. And he... Um, uh, then he, terrible things happened when he was coming home, and he was... The, the French held him as a sort of important prisoner for about seven years, because he thought we'd done a... signed a treaty with France. But on his way home, the French abrogated the treaty, so he was he, he had an, an, an unhappy experience then, and his wife walked off with his best friend. So the by the time he went back to England, all his money has been his wife's money, and he uh, w was bankrupt. And at that point, everyone rallied round. A lot of people lent him money, and the, the marbles were sold to the British government in 1816. Uh, for £35,000, which was millions and millions in today's money. Yeah. Now, lots of people in that debate said, we ought to have those, uh, we ought to hold these marbles in trust, and when Greece is independent, then they should go back to Greece. Lots of people in the debate said that sort of thing. And then, um, I mean, and quite soon after that, at the Battle of Navarino, Greece got its independence. And 